Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you some insights into some great games for game night. So are you in the mood for something beautiful and puzzly? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about Mezzan. Mezzan is a stunning tile matching game in which you're creating a painting. You'll start with a 5x5 five five grid and on a turn you remove tiles of the same animal type. Then slide down the rows and flip and replace the removed tiles at the top. By grouping the same tile icons together you'll achieve the goals. Play for 10 rounds to determine the winner. Thing one, what's this game all about? So Mezzan is an abstract tile laying game, um, one in which you are trying to create a painting. And this is because Mezzan is a particular style of art in itself that's kind of inspired by the Mezzan River. So you are matching symbols and that together to create a painting of your own. So it doesn't really have much of a theme, but it has a very kind of distinct voice and vision um, that kind of matches everything together nicely here. Now, similar games to this. Um, bizarrely enough, I'm going to compare it to something like Bullet Heart, which is kind of a match three puzzle game that where you match the symbols, um, the pieces above them kind of fall down into your grid. And that definitely happens here. But Mezzan is definitely more focused on gathering sets and getting bonuses. Thing two, what kind of actions will you be performing on your turn? So Mezzan is really a tile flipping pattern matching game. You start the game with a five by five grid of all white animal pictograms. And the aim of the game is to arrange these in such a way as to match the patterns that the game asks for each round. Um, so you'll always be able to see what goal it is for the next turn, but also for the goal for the turn beyond that so that you can plan ahead accordingly. How you shuffle your tiles around is the crux of this game. So the first player will get to name an animal type and you're allowed then to remove all connected animals of that type from your board. And when you do this, you take them out, you slide down everything that was on top of them, a little like Tetris, and then you take the tiles that you took out and you flip them over to the other side, which is black, and put them into the top of your grid again at random. Um, and so the concept here really is you're shuffling around your board to match these goals, but you're not quite sure always what's on the other side of the other tile. Um, there are some ways to kind of mitigate which animals you can remove. There are amulet tokens and you can use those to say, hey, I, I don't want that animal this round, I'd like a different one. But they also allow you to include or exclude kind of extra animals into whatever pattern you were thinking of removing anyway, which is kind of a nice touch. So you play for 10 rounds and the person with the most victory points wins. This game to me feels awfully familiar. I'm amazed I haven't played it before, but it's kind of fun and thoughtful and easygoing. Thing three on the table. So Mezzan really is kind of something special set up. It's beautiful, it's kind of eye-catching and vaguely Christmassy. Um, if anything, the game board for keeping your score feels more like an artwork than it really does for keeping scores. It's, it's almost unnecessary, but it is absolutely beautiful. And then you add in the fact that everyone has their own five by five grid of these beautiful pictograms, like the game looks really good. Those grids, however, I think are the things that take up the most space, but I don't think this is a particularly big game for your table either. I think you could fit this happily on most tables. It takes about 30 minutes for two of us to play and the rule book is really good in this one. Everything was well explained and there was a nice reference section at the back to explain all of the goal cards. So kudos to that. Um, replayability wise, well, like it's a puzzle game. So kind of that's where most of replayability is coming from. But there's also good variability in kind of the goal cards and things like that you're scoring um, that gives this game a bit of longevity, I think. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? 
Well, for me, the art on this box is what really sold me. I took one look at it and uh, decided I had to play it. And I didn't even check what type of game it was. I didn't even look at the back of the box. I was like, no, this is definitely for me. Um, it's just such an unusual and beautiful looking game. I really like the art in this. It's very iconic. It's very kind of pictograph. It's very, um, I don't know, completely like appealing. It's definitely got a vibe and a feeling all of its own. And this art is carried throughout the game and it's very functional art too, actually. Um, I liked all of the different animals that are here um, and I liked how it all kind of fits together into this kind of strangely illustrated world. Um, component wise, everything here is perfectly nice, but there's nothing special to kind of write home about. about. Um, in my mind, the art really carries this game. Um, and that's not to say that there isn't a good game here either, but I think it's definitely that first port of call when you look at it. I think it's going to be the thing that draws you in. Um, overall, I suppose, yeah, I, 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 when I opened this box, I, I went, wow, I was just so excited to see what was inside it and get out to play it and just enjoy how it looks. And I think it's the kind of game where you really will enjoy its distinctiveness. Thing five, is this game actually any good? It's clear that I really liked how this game looked right from the start, but the real question I suppose I have to ask myself is this game more style or more substance? And I'm rooting for the substance side because I do feel like there's a very solid little game in here. And it's one that we're kind of familiar with. It does feel a bit like playing Tetris sometimes as you kind of watch the pieces drop down and you're trying to connect them. But there is much more of a focus on set collection here. And I think that takes this game away from Tetris and to somewhere slightly adjacent. Um, what's interesting about the game as a whole is that there are only 10 turns, meaning you only get 10 actions. So each action is incredibly important, not just for now, but for the turn after, because you really do need to do a lot of planning ahead or setting up to be able to try and match some of these goals that come up. And of course, there are amulets um, to help you kind of make this easier at times. And uh, I do really appreciate those. It feels like they give you a little bit more control over what's happening on your board. However, some of the game does feel a little bit like you have very little control whatsoever. So when you take out a tile and you, you flip it over and put it back at the top of your rows, you don't necessarily know what's on the other side of that tile at the time. Unless I was supposed to be memorizing them or something like that, but I definitely didn't do that. So there are choices where you, you feel like you've made a choice, but not really. And sometimes these are good things. Um, you can just kind of look into a particular situation that scores low the victory point. Or of course, they could be negative as well and mess entirely with your plans. So this notion of agency, I think, is less strong than you would think initially. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. There's something about the random in this game that kind of levels the playing field a little bit because if you're in the right place at the right time, you can really just look into something good. And I think that means that you kind of have to think about this as a great family weight game because no matter anybody's skill ability, somebody can still have a really big turn one way or the other. And I think I kind of like that sense of appeal to the game. Um, overall, I had a lot of fun with Mezzan. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, the only minor complaint I have about it is actually how you're supposed to randomly shuffle your tiles that you've taken out of your board and are putting back at the top. It's very difficult to keep them in the right orientation while shuffling and also not to somehow sneakily look at them while shuffling and cheat a little bit. Um, I wish there was a better way to do that. Um, but beyond that, this game is easygoing, it's fun, it's interesting and the choices um, well, I feel like they matter. I feel like they're important. I suppose you have to, don't you? Or otherwise, why are you playing? Um, so yeah, that's Mezzan. Do I think you should have Mezzan in your collection? Um, yeah, I kind of do. I really like this one. Um, it's just such an elegant visual little puzzle game um, that's not too long to play, not too much stress. And I think it's the kind of game you could probably play with a lot of people. So if that sounds like your jam, you should definitely go and check it out. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Mezzan, why not shout them off in the comment box below? And tune in again next time for some more, hopefully short and informative, board game reviews.